Okay, folks, I'm just going to very quickly go through the manual Boolean process, the, the gist of it, the very simplified version of it. Um, and I'm also going to show you a trick. Uh, a lot of people freak out about like, oh, how do I cut a hole in something? Well, uh, I'll show you a quick trick that I um, just kind of came up with on my own at one point. Uh, first of all, if you want a, let's say, a cylindrical hole into a, uh, a flat face, first of all, a cylinder is just not a great thing in general. Um, it, it, all these edges going into one point is not ideal. That's not good necessarily. Um, and also, there's a ton of edges. To make a decent cylinder, you've got a ton of edges there. Uh, the more edges you have, of course, the more it you know, cuts into your, your poly count there. It's going to eat away at your, your budget there. So um, You could turn that down a bit. Subdivision axes here. Click on uh, poly, poly cylinder 1 in the inputs. Turn this, just turn the subdivision axes down um, and get something that, that feels like it's not too dense. Uh, 12 is uh, a pretty good number. It, it still reads as a cylinder, um, even though it's a little bit blocky. Um, but use you know if you get if you if you soften some of these normals by going to these edges here and I soften the edge, it still reads as a cylinder. It's just a, it, it's more like a, a game cylinder and not a uh, feature film cylinder. Uh, so anyways, um, okay. So again, cutting a hole in something. If I turn down the subdivision caps, or I'm sorry, turn it up to two, um, I will give myself this uh, ring to play with. Uh, poly, you know, edge loops. So if I go into edge mode, grab an edge, the multi-cut tool is new for 2015. You see, that's why it lights up green like that. New for 2015, the multi-cut tool replaces the poly split tool. Um, and I can do all kinds of, everything that the poly split tool could do and then, and then some. I can click and drag like this to slice. Um, I can click and drag, you know, across it in any way. So if you click, if you start the click outside the model and drag across the model, it slices it. Be careful with that though, because that leaves a ton of um, a ton of n-gons everywhere that you'd have to go and clean up. Now you can also use it like the poly uh, split poly tool used to, which is you can click from a point <clears throat> to a point. I can click from a point to an edge. I can click from an edge to an edge. Again, um, a lot of these though, um, this is gonna leave n-gons. I'm gonna have to clean up the n-gons. So um, be careful. This tool can get you into trouble with n-gons. Make sure you go back and check and clean them all up. But um, what's really amazing is if you hold the control key down and mouse over an edge, it now drops in edge loops. So I can drop in edge loops that way. Um, but back to the uh, this edge loop. I'm gonna double click this edge, give, get myself that edge loop, and I'm going to scale that edge loop you know, out to kind of give myself a, a little bit of a border there. Um, now, I can go into face mode, grab those faces, make sure I deselect those faces, and I can extrude down and um, push it all the way down through to the bottom and then hit the delete key because I don't need those bottom ones. And I can also go ahead and select all these bottom faces as well. Grow selection, hit delete. Now I have this scenario. In fact, let me turn off my grid so you can see better. So now I have this scenario where there's a cylinder um, coming out from there. Um, now, how do I get this uh, into... Actually, you know what I should do? I should just delete this whole outer ring as well. Okay, so now I've, I've deleted that whole outer um, ring of faces there. Um, and I did that, by the way, by selecting one face, then double-clicking the next face in line. That will now select uh, the whole ring of faces. But um, now what I want to do is go into edge mode. And in this case, let's see, actually, I do want the grid back for a second. So you can see what I'm looking at here. I believe I'm going to want, let's just go like this. Let's get all four of these. Let's get those four f edges. And now I'm going to use the scale tool and the move tool. to, f to s The scale tool like this, again, awesome trick for flattening something. Now I've got a flat edge there. And now I can grab these two. Yeah, because I want I got four on that side. So let me, get, let me just do the opposite side first. Deselect that. 
There we go. I always see I toggle x-ray mode a lot in x-ray mode again x-ray mode is right here I have a hotkey I set up for it x-ray mode great for double checking your selections and then wireframe on shaded mode I, I toggle a lot as well in this case I only have one object so it doesn't matter but um, I, but wireframe on shaded is right here um, so um, use those those are very useful uh, again I'm gonna use click click and drag on the scale until it's until it stops moving scoot this out grab this grab this scale that until it stops moving you see what I'm getting there now I'm getting basically a flat planar surface um, that's a, a perfect square or at least a square I don't know if it's perfect because I you know using the move tool like I was um, but I've got a square now this I could actually sew in to uh, some other uh, some other model let's let's create another let's like a cube of some sort and let's say I wanted to stitch this, stitch this hole into um, this cube. Well, now I want the um, wireframe unshaded. So here, um, this is what I'm talking about: manual Boolean process. I now have this model and this model, this cube and this um, cylinder that I have, you know, forced into a squared uh, hole-shaped scenario. Now all I got to do is combine these and then stitch them together. Um, but before I even bother to combine them, I'm going to get it ready to, to sew together. I'm going to get it ready to merge. And, and, and to do that, I'm going to do the multi-cut tool on the cube. I'm going to try to cut that edge loop as close as I can to that. Cut that edge loop there. Cut this edge loop here. This edge loop here. And now I'm going to need more than that. You might think that's enough, but it's really not. Um, because I'm going to need edges to meet up with each one of these points. Um, and I may end up going back to clean, uh, clean it up and optimize it, but this gets me a lot closer to the ballpark of uh, being able to sew it because I, ha I now have a point to line up with each other point on the other model. That's really what you need. You need you need a, you need it to um, basically be in sync. I need I need enough points to merge with the other points, um, and you can sometimes get away with you know merging more than one point um, together and, and I'll show you that in a minute but for now I've kinda got this prepped and ready to go in fact I can actually take this and delete these faces now um, and now you see I'm, you see where I'm going with that now you can see that there is um, this piece here in fact let's, let's get this um, snapped up to, to this level so um, now, now these are, are roughly uh, lined up. In fact, uh, I'll actually do. Let's make it perfect. Let's do that. Um, let's get all of these faces on the top here. I will hold down the V key and then click and drag until it snaps. And it's, you know, it might be better if we combine it first. It'll probably it'll probably snap uh, more effectively. Uh, you shouldn't have to, but. Sometimes if, if it's in the same model, it behaves better. So um, let's just do that. Let's shift. Uh, so I'm going to grab both these models, shift, right, click, combine. And then I'm going to this time grab. In fact, I'm going to grab all the edges this time. To see if that helps uh, be more precise. Grab that and then I'm going to control click to deselect those. Control click to deselect those. So I just have those. Oops. Oh, looks like I. <laughs> wasn't careful enough earlier. I'm gonna leave that alone because I don't really feel like going back to fix it. But I am now going to snap. There we go. Holding the V key. Now this is perfectly um, planar. This the the top of this cube is now perfectly planar and flat with the top of this um, this surface here. Now all I got to do is fix these uh, these edges here. So I'll double click that. Double click that. Hold down the V key. Snap it to that. Double click this, and let's see, oh, undo that. Um, so now, undo, undo. Okay, so I'll, I'll need those as well. You know what? Easy enough. Even though I kind of screwed it up right there, now I can, do I can click those and then grab the scale tool and fix it. And then once I fixed the, um, made it planar again, I can just hold the uh, hold the v, you know go back to the move tool hit hold the V key again snap okay now that's perfectly aligned um, 
So um, you, you, I think you kind of see where I'm getting with this. And now I can just, I, actually, in fact, I could save myself a little time and effort. Um, I can now go in and grab these points um, and just merge, merge vertices, merge vertices, because I know that they're on the same plane now. Because I, because I made them on the same plane, I don't have to worry too much about um, whether they're, uh, you know, as long as they're on the same plane, it won't disturb the surface. It just, you know, it'll just be whether or not they're straight. Um, so go ahead, merge vertices, merge vertices, merge vertices. And now I could have just done it this way too. I could, I can go in here with the edge, the edges. And uh, this may or may not work perfectly because some of those verts aren't lined up perfectly, but let's find out. So I'm gonna just grab, make sure I've just just grabbed those border edges. I don't want to. I want to be careful not select these border edges. But now I can do shift right click merge merge border edges, and I'll go to this. Make sure that the tolerance is okay. So now I need a little higher tolerance. Turn that up a bit. Got rid of one. Let's turn it up a bit more. There it goes. Bam. So. That's it. Um, I have now manually booleaned. I hate that term, by the way. Booleans in Maya suck, so it's left a really bad taste in my mouth for the word Boolean. Um, and we could fix this if we want right now. Let's just fix it. So if we want that to be perfectly planar again. Again, to make something planar, just grab them all and then just use the scale tool, scale tool, scale tool, scale tool, bam. It's now perfectly planar. Um, so there you go. And, and now again, if you wanted to delete, delete these bottom faces, you can see you could put this anywhere now. You could you could embed this into a spaceship or whatever, and now now you have a flat cube that has a a hole in it, and there's clean geometry here. You see there's quads, 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 and you could optimize this if you don't want quite so many edges coming off here. You could start to collapse some of these. You can go grab those, collapse edge, grab those, collapse edge, um, and you could just keep going with that if you want to be super efficient with it. Now this is not, again, this is not ideal having all these triangles, but in terms of optimization, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do um, if you're trying to make game models. You know, collapse edge, bam, so there you go. Um, and again, I'm using the marking menus. I know, I, I, know I, I talk about that in all my videos. If you want more of an explanation on the marking menus, um, it's just shift right click or control right click, depending on what you're trying to do. But um, watch my other videos for more of an explanation on that. But this is now um, a clean model that has a cylindrical hole in it, and I didn't boolean anything. Don't use a Maya boolean, even if it works. It'll you know it doesn't crash Maya burst into flames. Uh, even if it works, it's still gonna leave you a horrible mess. So don't use Maya booleans. This. If you want to describe it as the manual boolean process, describe it as that. That's fine. It's technically it is. It's just I hate that word. So that's it. Um, so that 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 is an explanation again of the multi cut tool. Um, you know, so you can drop edge loops. Um, it's also an explanation of um, the manual boolean process as far as combining something, and you cannot sew it together unless you combine it. Don't forget that step. You have to you have to combine something before you can merge verts on it. So um, anyways, manual boolean process, there it is. Um, good luck, and hopefully that answers the, some of your questions. And I will try to put up together another video uh, on uh, UV mapping in a minute since that's coming up. And, I, and there's new mapping tools. So I will um, I'll go over that next, okay? Anyways, good luck, and I will see you in class.